In the world of professional sports, few names inspire the same respect and wonder as Michael Schumacher. Throughout his career, Michael Schumacher, a titan of the Formula One paddock and a real motorsport legend, set a stunning number of records in addition to winning seven F1 World Championships. Many people believe that Schumacher is the best driver of all time. However, on December 29, 2013, a horrific tragedy that at the time appeared implausible and tragically ironic quickly and irreversibly changed his life. Before retiring in excellent health in 2012 at the age of 43, Schumacher had more than 15 years of experience at operating the fastest and most dangerous vehicles on the plan. However, the speed demon was caught off guard in a bizarre fall only meters from a major ski slope a year later while on a family vacation in the French Alps, which led to serious brain injuries. Since then, the sports icon has been out of the public eye, with an almost impenetrable veil of secrecy surrounding his health odyssey over the previous 10 years. Now, 10 years have passed since that terrible day, and he is only 5 days away from becoming 55. On the day of Schumacher's almost fatal collision, it was a gorgeous bluebird morning on the breathtaking slopes of Marable, a renowned ski resort in the French Alps. A little more than a year had passed since the final race of the 2012 Formula One season, when the seven-time world champion had declared his second and final retirement. He was then taking a family vacation. He had gone skiing with his then 14-year-old son Mick, and it had seemed like a typical outing until misfortune befell him. Schumacher chose to go off-piste while descending the well-traveled Kumdi Soliri route. He entered a narrow sliver of untracked powder, dotted with small boulders, between Piste Chamois and Pist Bitch. In addition to being a skilled driver, the great skier had a run named after him at Madonna di Compiglio, an Italian resort where Ferrari held its yearly winter retreat. Though the off-piste stretch was only a short distance and had a very gentle gradient, there remained a lurking risk. The powder paradise had become a minefield, with some of the boulders hidden from view by the snow stung. One such boulder caught Schumacher's spies, and the unexpected force threw him skyward, leaving him unable to avoid colliding headfirst with another rock. It had a disastrous effect. A traumatic brain injury resulted from Schumacher's broken skull and cracked hard shell, despite the fact that his helmet took up most of the impact. Within minutes, ski patrollers and a helicopter rescue crew arrived at the site. According to eyewitnesses, Schumacher remained aware following the accident, but was moving erratically and was unable to respond to queries. As soon as the rescue team realized how serious the situation was, they immobilized him and took him to the adjacent Moutiers Hospital, where he arrived at 11.53 in. After that, he was transported by helicopter to the prestigious Center Hospitalier Universitaire de Grenoble, which houses a state-of-the-art neurosurgery unit, where he underwent two critically needed brain pressure reduction surgeries. Following an inquiry, it was determined that Schumacher was not skiing above his capabilities at the time of his accident, and was instead moving at a regular pace. Nevertheless, it's believed that a motorbike accident in February 2009 that left a former driver with fractures to his head and neck made his injuries worse. These injuries would have almost likely been fatal had the driver not been wearing a helm. Only a few hours after the initial surgery, Jean-Francois Payen, the hospital's chief anesthesiologist, reported that the former driver was in critical condition and fighting for his life, deeming the situation to be very serious. He came to the conclusion, we really can't say when he will recover, we cannot answer this yet. Only dependable guests were permitted to visit Schumacher within the tight security perimeter around the hospital. At his bedside were his wife, Corinna, daughter Gina Marie, and Mick. Later, close family friend and former CEO and head of the Ferrari team, Jean Todd, joined them. Professor Gerard Salant, a specialist in brain and spine injuries and a personal friend of Schumacher, provided support to his medical team by operating on a hematoma on his left side of the brain during a second surgery. Against all chances, the driver made it through both surgeries, but for several weeks afterward, his condition remained serious. Schumacher's medically induced coma was being gradually taken from him by April 2014, and by June of the same year, the process was finished. After that, he went to Lausanne University Hospital for further rehabilitation.
In September, he moved out of the hospital and into the 50 million pounds Schumacher family mansion in Glan, Switzerland, which is located on the shores of Lake Geneva. 2018 saw the start of rumors that Schumacher and his wife Corinna had secretly relocated to a private villa on the Spanish island of Majorque. In 2020, Elisabetta Gregoracci, Schumacher's former supervisor at Benetton, Flavio Briatore's ex-wife, made similar accusations. Speaking on Italy's version of Big Brother, Gregoracci stated, Michael doesn't speak, he communicates with his eyes. After they relocated to Spain, his wife turned their home into a hospital. I know exactly three people who are allowed to see him, she remarked. However, Schumacher's manager, family, and other sources have disputed her allegations, and it is generally acknowledged that he is still in Switzerland. Following Schumacher's tragedy, there was a global outpouring of both sympathy and anguish, but his 1995 wife, Corinna, has insisted on complete confidentiality on his health. Schumacher's friends, family, and larger circle have all dutifully complied with the restriction, believing that the racer and his close family should be kept private in order to preserve his dignity. Strict security measures prevent anyone but a select few from entering his bedside, which has naturally led to several rumors regarding Skumi's health. But according to Corinna and Schumacher's manager Sabine Kim, multiple covert attempts to meet Michael were made just a few days after his accident. Therefore, this is a cost worth bearing. In an attempt to enter Schumacher's hospital room on the pretext of blessing the injured racer, a journalist disguised as a priest had attempted to do so. At the time, Kem told Die Welt, I wouldn't have ever imagined something like this could happen. However, Schumacher's family would face another attempt to reveal specifics about his situation six months later. Several people have attempted to take advantage of Schumacher's privacy by selling their information. Six months after the tragedy, an executive at the helicopter air rescue form that had flown him to Switzerland from a French hospital allegedly attempted to steal his medical records, offering them for 50,000 euros, 40,000 pounds, to a number of European media sites. Riga, the primary provider of air ambulance services in Switzerland, was identified by French authorities based on the IP address of the computer used in the heist. At the time, the business vehemently denied any involvement in the theft, even though it admitted receiving a medical file to help Schumacher relocate. After identifying the air rescue executive as the source of the alleged theft, prosecutors from France and Switzerland apprehended him and put him in a Zurich jail cell. However, the man's lifeless body was discovered by officers handing in his cell the following morning, hours before he was supposed to appear in court. The man's identity, age, and country were withheld by the authorities. However, at the time, the prosecutor's office in Zurich stated that he had acted alone and that there were no signs of his mental instability or suicidal thought. Kemp stated at the time, We are at a loss for words and deeply shocked, but warned that any release of the clearly stolen medical file would result in prosecution, meaning the notes were never made public. A year subsequently, the family barely escaped yet another disastrous spill. With permission to enter Schumacher's house, an unidentified friend took a picture and smuggled it out. The picture was purportedly being offered for 1 million euros to media organizations throughout Europe. However, German authorities moved quickly to break up the planned sale of the photo, claiming that it was a violation of his own range of life and an invasion of privacy. The picture was never released, and Schumacher has never been seen in any post-accident photographs. A German magazine boldly displayed an image of the Formula One driver's face on its cover earlier this year, announcing that it had managed to have the first interview with Schumacher since his December 2013 skiing tragedy. Questions were raised right after on how Die Actuell was able to get the notoriously private Schumacher to talk on the record, considering the severity of his injuries and his family's unwavering desire to keep him pride. Schumacher was quoted in the byline Free Story as stating that his life had completely changed as a result of his mishap. My wife, my kids, and the entire family went through a terrible period during that period, Schumacher continued. My body couldn't have handled it all otherwise, so I lay for months in a kind of artificial coma due to my severe injuries. 
However, the interview which was published in April ended with an acknowledgement that the magazine had not spoken to Schumacher or any of his family members, and that the remarks were made up. Was Michael Schumacher the one who said it all? The conversation took place online. The now widely mocked article concluded, on a page that has to do with artificial intelligence, or AI for short. It was eventually discovered that the magazine had staged the interview by using character, I, a service that is well known for letting users create conversations with celebrities. Die Actuel had immediate and severe repercussions. The managing editor of Funk, the magazine's publisher, declared at the time that this tasteless and misleading article should never have appeared, leading to the nearly immediate firing of the then editor, Ann Hoffman. The publicity gimmick was called too stupid to be true by a German media exeter. The Schumacher family intended to sue the publishers because of the intense controversy surrounding the fictitious interview, but they eventually appeared to back down. Because of the stringent privacy rules that Corona and Schumacher's inner circle imposed, very little is known about the present state of his health. When they asked to see the racer, a number of his close friends and former co-workers were refused to wait. Rubens Barrichello, Schumacher's former Ferrari teammate, had his request denied on the grounds that it would not do him or me any good. A year after the accident, Corinna was blamed by Schumacher's former manager Willy Weber for preventing him from seeing the athlete, claiming he had attempted dozens of times to obtain permission to meet his former client but had been turned down. Subsequently, he charged that the family was hiding the whole truth, and earlier this year, he acknowledged that he had given up on ever seeing him. Additionally, former Jordan team owner Eddie Jordan disclosed that he had also been sidelined, although he acknowledged the family's strong privacy policies and more intimate inner circle. Eddie Jordan handed Schumacher his first start in the sport at the 1991 Belgian Grand Prix with a one-off dryer. Not much information has been released regarding the various treatments Schumacher might have had after the initial surgeries in an effort to get bit. However, it was claimed in 2019 that he had cutting-edge stem cell treatment at the Georges Pompidou European Hospital in Paris in an attempt to rejuvenate his neurological system. Schumacher, who is being treated by famous cardiothoracic surgeon Philip Menashe, arrived for his treatments in an ambulance with 10 security officers on either side. Although it is unproven, it is believed that Schumacher underwent the procedure again a year later. Le Parisien, a French publication, reported that after the procedure, Schumacher was declared conscious by the medical personnel, but they provided no other details. Aside from this, throughout time, a few significant figures in Schumacher's inner circle have shared some insight on the legend's current state of affairs. Since his accident, Corinna has taken over a significant portion of the duty for guarding her husband's privacy and assembling his inner circle but she was a vital component of his incredible success as he became a superstar before the catastrophe. She is a skilled rider and athlete in her own right, having captured a European championship in 2010. She also developed into a cunning businesswoman, assisting Michael and their advisors in making wise choices and investments while he amassed enormous wealth from race victories, lucrative contracts, and sponsorships. Corinna's acquaintances remarked in an interview with German publication Bill that she was and still is underestimated by many today, and that Michael was one of the few people who really recognized how powerful she is. Throughout his career, the racer publicly acknowledged the importance of his wife, saying that she was a great source of strength and that they made decisions together in a number of interviews. Since 2013, Corinna has given very few interviews, preferring to spend her time tending to her husband's estate, protecting his privacy, and creating internationally recognized horse farms in Texas and Switzerland. However, in the Netflix documentary Schumacher from 2021, Corinna revealed more about herself than before. She expressed her unwavering love for her spouse and said that although she misses their previous life together, the man she married is still there. Every day, Michael is missed. I'm not the only one that misses him, though. Corinna remarked, It's the kids, the family, his dad, everyone around him. Even if Michael is here, everyone still misses him. Not the same, but this place. He continues to amaze me with his strength every day. I never held God responsible for what took place.
It was simply the worst passable luck somebody could have in life. Corin also talked about how she thought Schumacher's relatively trouble-free racing career had been watched over by guardian angels. She added, It just never occurred to me that anything could ever happen to Michael. I'm not sure if that's because you are in some ways naive, or if it's just a protective wall that you put up yourself. One of Schumacher's closest public-facing pals is still Todd, the former president of the FIA and team leader for Ferrari. It is reported that the two of them regularly watch Formula One races together. Todd has been the family's go-to spokesperson for the past 10 years and the most well-known member of the Schumacher family to provide daily updates on the artist. I see Michael once or twice a month, which is very often, the 77-year-old stated in 2010. I always respond the same way when people ask how he is. He fights. Todd's 2019 suggestion that Schumacher has very little communication ability was the closest he has gone to making a direct statement about his friend's health. It goes without saying that our friendship cannot remain the same simply because there is no longer the same level of communication, he remarked. Then, early in the year, Todd insisted that even while Schumacher was still here, he was not the Michael he once was, and he did not miss him. His life has changed, and I get to spend special moments with him, Todd went on. That's the only thing to say. Sadly, ten years ago, fate dealt him a blow. The Michael we knew in Formula One is no longer him. Mick Schumacher, who had gone with his father on the disastrous trip, was just 14 years old when his father was involved in an accident. Since then, he has emerged as the family member that interacts with the public the most and has forged his own career in motorsport. On his journey to Formula One, when he landed a two-year contract as a driver for American constructor Haas, he won championships in both the Formula 3 and Formula 2 junior classes. Haas failed to compete with bigger, more successful teams and was eventually let go at the end of the 2022 season. However, he was kept on as a reserve driver by the Mercedes F1 team, which his father had helped create back in 20 n He will now participate in the 2024 FIA World Endurance Championship as a constrictor for Alpine. In touching exhibition events, Mick has also honored his father's career on the track several times. He has completed exhibition laps in his father's 1994 Benetton F1 vehicle at Spine 2017, set a record in the Ferrari F2004 at Mugello in 2020, and most recently appeared at Goodwood's Festival of Speed this summer wearing his father's original race helmet and Mercedes overalls. A real gem, Mick is a very well-spoken and friendly person who, in spite of his desire to respect his father's privacy, has frequently provided heartfelt insights into their condition. The influence of his father's immense history in motorsport has also been a topic of discussion. He claims that Schumacher's advice to do what you love gave him the courage to advance from karting to the top of the motorsport rankings before his Formula One debut. Mick called his father his idol in 2018. Thinking about my dad's career is never easy, Mick remarked. What my dad accomplished was remarkable. Every day, I am more grateful for it. My father is the finest, and I always want to measure myself against the best. I also look up to him. If I can put myself in his shoes, it makes me happy. In a heartbreaking moment in the Netflix documentary, Mick expressed his yearning to talk to his father about his emerging career. He was on the edge of tears when he said he would give up everything to just have the chance to talk to his father about Formula One. Naturally, these moments and experiences that many individuals, in my opinion, share with their parents have either completely disappeared or diminished since the tragedy. And that seems a little unfair to me, Mick remarked. I believe that now, my dad and I would understand each other differently. Mostly because there would be a lot more for us to discuss, and because we speak the same language, the language of motorsport, and most of the time, that's where my mind is. I thought that would be so awesome that I would sacrifice everything for it. Some members of Schumacher's family, such as his brother Rolf, have moved away from his grandfather, but the immediate family, including his father Rolf, who resides near the family home on Lake Geneva, remains quite close to him. Despite not having frequent communication with Schumacher's immediate family, Rolf claims to be available for support at all times. In November, Rolf talked about his strained relationship with the family and said, 
My heart smiles when I see his children Gina Maria and Mink. This was published in the German journal Bent. I'm available to offer advice to anyone in the family who may require it. They follow their own route. The former Formula One racer said, I miss Michael from back then. Sometimes life is not fair. Michael experienced great luck call of his life. However, there was this terrible mishap. Michael had been more to Rolf than just his elder brother, as the six-time Formula One Grand Prix winner pointed out. Michael wasn't just my brother, he said to the local press. He was also my coach and mentor when we were young. He gave me the complete education in kart racing. Despite their seven-year age difference, Rolf remarked, he was always by my side. Together, we raced, practiced overtaking tactics, and engaged in all the essential motorsport activities. He passed on all the different things he had already internalized, the former driver for Williams and Jordan emphasized. I had the privilege of studying under the greatest. The 48-year-old businessman and commentator summarized Michael's terrible situation by saying, Fortunately, advanced medical science provides many opportunities, but nothing is the same as it used to be. Those wanting to see the motorsport star in public or get a definitive update on Schumacher's condition are likely to be disappointed if the first 10 years following the accident are any indication. Felix Stamm, the family's attorney, gave an explanation in November of why his inner circle decided not to provide a thorough health report. The issue has always been safeguarding personal data. Naturally, we spoke a lot about how to accomplish it. We also talked about whether it would be best to make a last statement regarding Michael's health. He said, but that wouldn't have been the end of it, and there would have had to be permanently updated water level reports, suggesting that Schumacher's condition is evolving. Such a report may be repeated by the media, who would then inquire, and how does it look now, a month, two, three, or even years following the news? And we would have to address the issue of voluntary self-opening if we wish to take action in response to this report. Although Dam acknowledged that Schumacher's ardent followers are left in the dark about their ailing idol, he maintained that those who genuinely cared about Michael would respect the family's right to privacy. I think the great majority of fans are capable of handling it, and will also acknowledge that the accident has started a process that calls for the private sanctuary, which will now be respected. But Todd, who is among the very few people outside of Schumacher's immediate family to see him frequently, has offered a ray of optimism. I hope he'll be seen by everyone once more. He stated that's what he and his family are aiming for. Whether Schumacher will ever make such a public comeback is still to be seen. However, there's no denying his unwavering skill at driving a Formula One car and his positive influence on millions of people worldwide will endure.